community involvement via emailing friends and neighbors that couldn't come. We don't know, or I can't think of anything else other than maybe what Amy said is perhaps like Angela's doing today is videotaping and at least giving the opportunity to people to witness what was missed. We try to send out emails, we try to uh, encourage people to go to the website. Um, I think we do a good job as best as we can without basically coming to pick you up and bring you to a meeting. But Which Ryan will do next. Which I will do next. <laughs> well, I do agree that cookies are the best. I'll tape for Bloody Marys. I was just going to say, follow the language, so. <laughs> I, I'm from Union County, and what they do in Union County for board meetings, town meetings, and everything, they televise it. They have a channel that they televise it. Maybe that'll help, because it is difficult for parents who work, their children, and they have more than one child, are in numerous different um, extracurricular activities. It is hard for them to get to, to the meetings most times. So maybe that's an idea. Thank you. Ms. Rooney? Thank you. Um, it is a challenge. It's always a challenge to get folks to meetings. Um, I think that the board has done a very good job with board bits in trying to force information out to the parents and it comes directly through a virtual backpack so it's helpful. I think continuing that will actually continue to get folks involved because we know when there's anything of controversy the community comes out in droves. A few years back when we had the huge budget deficit and we had to vote and everything else, we had parents coming out. I mean, we all were crammed into the firehouse. So I think if the board in general can put out the board bits, almost like in an executive summary format, like a few bullets to say, this is what we're covering, because that would help me understand in two seconds everything else that's going to be in that board bit. So that if I am interested in any one of those particular issues, I know I can just scroll down to the one I'm most interested in rather than being through all of it. So I think an executive summary on the top of the board bits just to pique the parents' interest or the community's interest might be helpful. Mr. Jones, do you have anything to say? The attendance at any meeting is always going to be difficult unless you do have a controversial issue that comes up. Um, as Amy had said, taking better advantage of the technology that's out there. Uh, I rely on the computer a lot to, to check the board bits, the meeting minutes. Um, if there's a way to tweak that information that's getting out there, whether it's a videotape feed or a video being added to it digitally, um, some kind of a format or a forum where concerned parents could ask a question to the board members uh, and get a response back from them or get a forum going amongst the parents themselves and more that involves the board in that ma manner also. Okay, thank you. Unfortunately, this is the last question because we're starting to run out of time. So if you did submit a question, I'm just sorry if we didn't get to it. This is a long one too, guys, so listen up. Our teachers and students work very hard to put on school plays, yet they have not been allowed to put the plays on for the students during school hours. How do we have time and money to pay for assemblies, but have not fully supported our teachers and staff? With no evidence. Do you agree or disagree? Can you repeat the question? Yes, Can I you agree. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Our teachers and students work very hard to put on school plays, yet they have not been allowed to put the plays on for the students during school hours. How do we have time and money to pay for assemblies, but have not fully supported our teachers and staff. Okay, thank you. Okay. Do you agree? Kind of a statement and the question is, do you agree? Can I go first on this one? You can go ahead. I have a vested interest because my son is in the play last year and this year, and I agree 100%. I would love for the, uh, the student body to see the play. Um, I'm not sure why, I don't even know why we have it. I know other schools do that. Usually the first, like on a Thursday, they have the, the in-school play for the children and then Friday and Saturday they do it for the public. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I honestly don't know why we have much of that, but maybe something we can bring up with Miss Epilady. <laughs> 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 Miss Epilady's here. We do that. <laughs> we, we do have and the... the assemblies are paid for by the PTO. That was going to be my follow-up. Is I agree with Brian that I, love, I would love for the kids to see it during the day, and we don't have the budget for assemblies unless the PTO raises the money for assemblies. 
So they're fantastic assemblies, and I think that the administrative staff thinks that they're important to keep, so they let us allocate the funding to it. Um, but I agree with Brian. I think that it would be great for the kids to see it. The students do see the play during the day. Ah. They do? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes. 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 That's what I was saying to you. We all agree then. We all agree then. Okay. Sorry. That's why they bring someone out that's not in the community, so then we have no idea what the question is. So they have right. a SPAC play during the day? The Green Witch Church at the elementary school presents to the elementary school. SPAC presents to the middle school during the day. Oh, I did not know that. I did not know that. Right. Good question. We have all learned something new today. Or at least some. Okay, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to thank you, though, for your questions. And we will now have the candidates' closing statements, beginning with Scott Rhodes. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak today. I hope I've uh, been able to meet some of your concerns and express my my position on everything quite clearly for you. Um, again, I think we have an excellent school system here, and really what I am hoping to do is to bring some of my administrative experience that I've had before in a government agency uh, to the school board, and hopefully to help find ways that we can contain the budget, and if need be, somehow bring address the concerns of, especially the issue of the money that has to go to Paper High School in a very cost-efficient way while maintaining the quality of education that we have for our students and to continue inspiring those students as the school has done so well. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight and uh, have a good night. Thank you very much for taking the time out to be here tonight. I know you all want to get home to your family, so I will try to make my formal closing brief. Um, in closing, I do have the professional experience in marketing and in business <clears throat> to understand the issues that we have in our district. I continue to seek out information about the board, the board of ed position, everything that is important to our students um, and the issues that we're currently facing. I understand that education is a business, and I think that we need to operate like a business. I'm not for paying more taxes, but I'm for paying the right taxes as we move forward. Um, by my volunteerism, you, um, you notice I take every opportunity that I can to be involved with my kids and the kids in this community, because I think it's very, very important, and it's very dear to me. My dad always told me, if you can't explain something, well enough, you don't understand it well. Or if you can't explain it clearly enough, you don't understand it well enough. And I think that's one of the problems that we have as a community, is that the board operates um, with the school district and we don't always have good visibility of knowing what's going on. If I am elected, I promise I will let everybody clearly understand the educational climate that is occurring in our district. Um, I have two young kids in this district. They're gonna be affected by the decisions that this board makes from now for the next 12 years. So trust me when I tell you I'm going to be there to ask the right questions and to get the right results for my kids and for your kids. My goal as your board of ed candidate is to really be your voice moving forward to work within a good budget and to ensure that our kids get the best education that they can out of this district. Thank you. for coming tonight and for your questions. Some of them were really pretty good. Actually, all of them. <laughs> um, you know, the reason I'm running for the board is as a frustrated parent who didn't understand things, I wanted to understand things more and I wanted the parents to have a voice. I didn't feel like my voice was being heard. And I said to a friend of mine, I said, why am I just sitting here complaining? Why don't I get off my butt and do something about it and attempt to work from within the system to make change and to be the voice of the parents? Um, I intend to have an open email with you so that if I am elected at on the board and you have questions, you can shoot me an email and I will shoot you the best possible answer I have. If I don't have the answer, I'll tell you I don't have the answer and I'll go get it for you. Um, you know, I think it's frustrating when we sit on the outside and look in and we don't understand what's being decided and why it's being decided. So I really want that open communication with everybody. I'm totally plugged into our community. I've worked here as a police officer. I'm a life member of the emergency squad. 
I'm a life member of the American Legion Auxiliary. I'm a member of the American Legion. Um, you know, I'm very involved with my children. I was involved with REC and getting back involved with REC now that my children have reached that age. They're both in first grade, so we're just starting out in the school district, and we're going to be here for a long time, and I don't plan on going anywhere. If after his words, if you have any questions, you know, grab me on the way out. Unless you want to run home, I have two twins. I'll be happy to stay here. Because <laughs> they're not quite in bed yet. 8.30? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, really, thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight, as we all are very busy. Um, I just have to say, in summary, if elected, I will do my best. That's all anyone can ask. Uh, to be a productive board member and help you in any way I can. As with everyone else, there will be an open door policy. If I don't have the answer, I will get the answer before the night is over. Plus, I have Brian here. <laughs> so, thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, thanks to the Student Council and the League of Women Voters for putting this together. I think it's a great opportunity for us to meet each other and to meet all of you and you us. Um, I've enjoyed my term the past three years on the school board. I'd like to continue to work with the school board, administration, and all of you. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with many of you as a scout leader, parent of your students uh, for coaching. Um, I enjoy my time on the school board and I want to thank my wife and family for giving me the opportunity at night to come to the many meetings between this and scouts and everything else. They sacrifice with me not being there sometimes. I try to make up for that in other ways. And uh, just thanks for coming out. I hope you all found this candidate's forum, forum an informative one, and I'd like to remind you to vote on April 17th. Thank you very much. <laughs>